Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Well, who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts, where I am a board certified criminal defense lawyer with an active practice. I actually try cases, I actually go to court, I argue, I kick the shit out of cops and prosecutors, and once in a while I get my ass kicked. But anyway, I, uh, and I love what I do. I love being a criminal defense lawyer. There's a concept in criminal law called the presumption of innocent. In other words, some people call it uh, innocent before proven guilty. Now, in the you don't have that presumption publicly. Um, it's kind of a fiction in a sense. Uh, publicly, uh, when you see um, people like me even uh, opine about cases and this person, that person. So you don't have that presumption out in public. However, when you get into a courtroom, there's a, a thing called presumption of innocence. Uh, and the presumption of innocence means that the government has the burden to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt and that you don't have the burden to show that you're innocent. You don't have to present any – but it's really kind of a fiction because you start out in a hole depending upon what kind of case it is. For example, if it's a criminal sexual conduct type case, um, I guarantee you the minute they read the charges, the jury is looking at your client thinking, what the fuck kind of sick shit did this guy do? And they're picturing him doing it. So you kind of start in a hole. Well, today we're going to be reacting to uh, guilty until proven innocent. And this is one of those JCS videos. I haven't seen it. So this is going to be uh, you know, a very uh, candid first-time reaction. And I, I haven't seen this reaction, but we want to a shout out to JCS because he actually saw our prior reaction that we did. And uh, evidently we have a mutual love society and we like what he does and he's liking what we do. But this gives us a platform, something kind of uh, to react to that I think uh, you all will enjoy. So uh, without further ado, guilty until proven innocent. With respect to interrogation analysis, it's no secret the benefit of hindsight gives you a considerable advantage when evaluating information. When you know a subject is guilty, it allows you to exclusively look for guilty behavior. The knowledge of outcome highlights the imperatives while stripping away non-essentials, and this allows you to calculate certain things that would otherwise be overlooked by cause of your own doubt. One of the things that people do is they ascribe behavior. So how would this person react? Um, you know, when they, when they found out that his wife w died, he was crying, but there weren't any tears coming out of his eyes, or he really didn't give a shit, or in the Brian Landry, Laundry situation, he took off. So those are all things that people can point to for guilt. Insight is twenty twenty. Everyone is well aware of this aphorism. And what's fascinating is that it not only applies, but is far more compatible to the innocent than it is to the guilty. The reason for this is because the information you have to scrutinize is reduced when dealing with innocent subjects. When you remove the versatile factors of misdirection and trickery, you're left with relatively straightforward behavior in comparison. Of course, the argument that everyone is different and can react in a different manner has merit. Human beings are unique. And that is exactly true. Um, we all react differently to different stimuli. Some people, in the face of tragedy, actually laugh. And that laughter can be misinterpreted as, uh, you know, evidence of their guilty conscience. When in, in reality, it's just a nervous reaction. And there will always be exceptions to every rule, especially when you take into consideration that trauma can cause atypical behavior. Yet atypical behavior and guilty behavior are generally distinguished from each other with relative ease. And that brings us to example number one. 37-year-old Michael Dixon, described by his peers as popular, friendly, but also unassuming and reserved. A self-professed introvert who turned down a job as a trade show presenter due to his fear of public speaking and kept his position as a trade show assembler instead. On August 15, 2003, in Hamilton, Ontario, police were called to report a man breaking into a jewelry store. Two now, keep in mind, it's Hamilton, Ontario. They don't have the same constitution that we do. 
officers responded and chased the perpetrator from the store down an alley before momentarily losing sight of them. At the same time, Michael Dixon was getting off a bus nearby coming home from work. He was the first person the police saw when coming out of the alley and was then arrested at gunpoint. Dixon voiced his innocence but didn't resist arrest and state So in almost every scenario the minute that you're encountered with the police, you should just zip a lip. Unless you can absolutely conclusively prove that it wasn't you and you were someplace else at the time. In this case, they found him right outside the alley, so he looks like a suspect. He would help in any way he could. He was taken to the Hamilton police station and questioned two hours after his arrest. Now you see him sitting there in, in the uh, interrogation room. One of the things, one tactic is to let you sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. And then you do all kinds of stuff. You Maybe you're crying. Maybe you're uh, not crying. Maybe you don't know what's going on and you're laughing. or, you know, And whatever behaviors that you exhibit there, they try to ascribe uh, some kind of guilty um, indicia to it. Sorry to keep you waiting, Michael. That's okay. One could advocate this as a common policing misstep if it weren't for the suspect being described as a small white man in the 911 call. As well as not being white, Dixon is six foot three. This detective has either forgotten standard procedure to review the call to dispatch or for some reason decided to reject it as evidence altogether. Michael is informed the room is being recorded and then read his rights. He asserts he is willing to speak with a detective and help with the investigation. Okay. It's a natural response when you're innocent to just say, yeah, well, let's talk about it. I mean, how can I help? And, um, and you can unwittingly corroborate some guilty fact, and then all of a sudden you're fucked. Stop self Um Why we're here is because earlier tonight you were arrested for breaking into a jewelry store in John Street South. Now, uh, your innocence and guilt in this, quite frankly, uh, isn't an issue. Uh, the evidence I have is, fr frankly, conclusive and overwhelming. If it was conclusive and overwhelming, they wouldn't need his statement. Remember that. If it's conclusive and overwhelming, well, then why the fuck do you need to talk to me? You know? Okay. Um, so I'm not even going to ask you if you did it, what, I'm, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. What I'm, what, what I have to ascertain. The subject maintains a forward-leaning posture and keeps his eyes both in contact and on the same level as the detectives. He displays self-confidence and poise, while it's the detective, in fact, who gives off a nervous disposition. What Michael just did is known as a non-verbal challenge in forensic psychology. So let's break it down into components. What I'm at, what, what I... In the next moment, the detective will shift in his seat to adjust his position and at the same time break eye contact to look somewhere in this direction. Michael's exaggerated head movement that follows isn't for the purpose of maintaining eye contact. He could maintain it while keeping his head perfectly still. It is in fact to let the detective know he is maintaining eye contact. It's a way of asserting dominance in the exchange. He is telling the detective that he is the more confident person in the room at that moment. What I'm at, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. Um, does that make any sense? I have to ascertain what kind of guy you are? What the fuck difference does that make? This is just a fishing expedition at this point. Whether, whether this is... You're like a serial burglar, and this is what you're doing all the time, or whether this is a, a one-off thing because of the power cut and everything that's going on tonight. That's, that's all we're here for. Um, okay, I understand your position. Like I yeah, say, yeah. I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and you've heard that a million times, I'm sure, in your career, but it's just, ask me questions, that's all I can do is answer them, I guess. I've got no questions, Don. What, what a candid, open uh, response. If I'm the defense lawyer defending him after he's charged, I love that response. Well, why did okay. you do it? That's, that's basically, yeah, that's, that's my only question. 
coming from that position, and, I'm, and since I'm saying I didn't do it, I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. No, I guess we haven't really got a... And you see he's, he's smiling a little bit like, fuck you, I didn't do this. He's kind of bewildered why he keeps saying that he did this. Really? A, a great amount of thought. Yeah. About. yeah. It's, it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an album for the discussion. Okay, well. Um, it, it's really not. You've no doubt come to notice how incredibly tolerant Michael is over the injustice of the situation. It's the most unusual thing about his behavior, and perhaps what makes him an anomaly with respect to innocent subjects. That's true, because when you, when you, the normal person doesn't have a whole lot of interaction with police on a regular basis, right? So they're sitting in that chair, and they're usually scared shitless. And somehow, they, I've seen it over and over again, especially with uh, juveniles, where they're basically talked into uh, agreeing with the authority figure. Before moving on to the second phase of this interrogation, we'll show you a more common response from an innocent subject facing similar charges. This is 26-year-old Justin, falsely accused of breaking and entering, first-degree theft, and assault. He was arrested at his home and only read his rights to silence on the way to the police station. The footage will begin before the subject knows what exactly he is being charged with. In his mind, he knows he has done nothing wrong, and at this point is unaware he is about to be wrongfully imprisoned for just over two years years. Alright, Justin, get that form. You know what I read you earlier? The 19th of February. Two days ago, so it'll be Tuesday. Alright, about five, six in the morning. Where were you at then? I was at my mother's house. Call her and ask her. I was downstairs asleep. Did, does she know? Did you know you were asleep at that time? Yeah. He doesn't see the interrogators as a threat, but more of an inconvenience. His responses are short and concise. He does not seek approval. He only responds to a question or states a point. I mean, did she see you sleeping at that time? Yeah, I'll never leave. I, if I ain't doing nothing, I stay at my mother's house. So I'm not. Working, I'm at home. Mm -hmm. You were, you didn't go to labor ready that day or nothing. Looking for like, totally. looking for a job, yeah. Okay. Uh, that morning, house got broken into. Okay. The detective's strategy is to reveal the charges in a periodic manner. Getting a confession to one charge at a time is far easier than gaining admission to all of them at once. The plan is to reveal the break-in and robbery charge first, then reveal the assault at a later stage. The detective goes on to explain that the accuser named Candy said she saw him loitering around her house in the evening hours of the night, and a short time later witnessed him break in and steal a multitude of valuable items. The detective... So... When, when the cops do this, when when they, uh, you know, they'll they'll give you misinformation. They'll say stuff that isn't quite true, and they'll make leaps, uh, making you think that somebody else is saying stuff about you. Then you will come up with, you know, invariably some kind of misstatement uh, that you could either, you know, innocently misremember facts, or and, and when it, and when you do that, it, it looks like you're trying to cover something up, but. This is super common, and that's why these interrogations are not always that reliable. Tiff then explains that she picked him out of a 12-picture lineup of suspects. Which may or may not be true. She says you broke in this no. apartment. Okay, well tell me why... Justin is now aware of the burglary charge, which holds a possible 20-year prison sentence due to previous convictions. He will now begin to forcefully assert his innocence, and each time he does so, will bring forward his posture and strengthen his vocal emphasis while making the assertion. All right, so I mean, she's saying that I was there before. Is that what she's saying? She's saying she's seen my face before the act, before the break-in happened. Yep. You can see he's in handcuffs and getting a little agitated and no good can come up from this statement um, especially when you have a background and so his best course would have been to say 
I want my fucking lawyer. I didn't break in her house. I don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no girl named Candy. None of shit, man. Why is she saying that you're... I don't know why she's saying she's... I don't know why I don't know. See, he gets... He, he starts getting loud. And do you see the difference between him and the other gentleman that we saw? Uh, how calm he was? Um, this looks like we thinks thou doth protest too much. That's why even if you're innocent and you sit there... Uh, and protest your innocence, it may, especially when you're obstreperous like this, that you look uh, possibly guilty. You were there. I was not there. I was not, I don't know this girl Candy. The only Candy that I, I even heard of is this uh, guy I know named Tim Stahl dates her. The person he just mentioned was the accuser's ex-boyfriend. Okay. That's it. And remember what I said before? Sometimes even innocent people can corroborate innocent facts that you don't uh, that you don't intend to, but all of a sudden, uh, that's exactly what the danger is when you um, give a statement. When you don't, because you don't know what they know, you don't know what the cops know, and so you don't know where they're going with this. He just linked himself to the burglary. How do you know Tim Stoll? I grew up with the dude, man. The accuser's testimony was later picked apart in court. She was caught lying on the stand multiple times, and Justin was exonerated. He was proven innocent not just beyond all reasonable doubt, but essentially beyond all doubt. Last thing I heard about them two, she had them arrested for domestic violence. That's all I know about this girl Candy. I ain't never went in that girl's house, none of that shit. I didn't do that shit. I did, as God is my fucking witness, I did not do it. I used to be a piece of shit when I got fucking pissed or I told myself, boy, going back. I ain't done nothing but work my fucking ass off the entire time I've been out. Can you, can you prove, other than you saying you did not, is it that, that morning? What can you tell, how can you prove to me that you were at home? All you gotta do is call and ask my mother. So you're telling me you didn't step foot out of the house? Not one foot. Tuesday. Not one. The detective then goes on to reveal Justin is accused of assaulting the supposed victim during the robbery. Take a man in the mirror and you hit her over the head with it and you guys fight. And she got injuries. No, man. And hell no, man. Get her goddamn boyfriend, Tim Stone, in here and question him about her goddamn injuries. Look at that straight right there. This sounds like it's a goddamn thing to fucking her boyfriend, Tim Stone, done fucking done something to her. And now they're trying to put it on me. That's exactly, I know that's what the fuck this is. And look, that's why we're talking to you, okay? No, this is bullshit, man, because I've tried everything in my fucking power to stay the fuck out of this goddamn fucking penitentiary shit. I... So, when you, when you see him, it's got to be really frustrating when you're being accused of something you didn't do. But the best course is to keep your cool, shut the fuck up, ask for your lawyer. I do it, shit, man. Okay. That's, that's what we're talking to, we're here. Although, when you get to trial... And you have all these denials. Um, you put your client on the stand, and they deny, 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 deny. And then you get the cop on the stand, and you can play this and say, well, what did, what did he tell you? It's called a prior consistent statement. And those prior consistent statements come into evidence. And so, uh, and those are, those are helpful, but it's a fucking landmine that you're walking through because you don't know what information you could uh, erroneously corroborate. We're here to investigate this, okay? That's why we're asking all these questions. I'm sorry to freak out, man, but I ain't fucking doing this shit, man. I'm fucking shaking. I ain't not fucking doing this, man. Justin had already served three years in prison for a robbery in his early 20s. He more than likely knew the reassuring tone of the investigator wasn't a good sign. Although slightly more animated than the average person, this form of aggression is a commonplace response from the innocent being directly accused. He comes off aggressive, but in a defensive manner. He is not being hostile, but highly combative when professing his innocence. His conduct is totally justified considering the circumstance. When facing a considerable amount of time in prison for something you didn't do, this level of anger is warranted. So what... And, th and think about this. He spent two years in the county jail fighting this. Two years. That's what we call guilty until proven innocent.
Compared to the forgiving composure of Michael Dixon, the extraordinary nature of his behavior becomes even more pronounced. I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. I guess we haven't really got a, really. a, a great amount of talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an album for the discussion. Okay, well. Um, it, it's really not. There's a number, a number of witnesses. Great. One of whom had a video camera. Perfect. What, what a genuine response. Great. I'm glad they're witnesses. Bring them forward. I, I love this guy. You know, I like the other guy, too. I mean, you have to feel for the guy because he gets out of the penitentiary. He's probably busting his ass every day. I go to work. I go home. I don't do anything else. And then he's trying to live a good life. And then he spends two fucking years in the county jail because nobody gives a shit. And he can't afford bail. Or they have him held without bail. And I just, this guy is just calm, cool, and collected. He's never been through this. The other guy's been through that, and that's probably what gives him all that animation. Well, that's that. relieving. That's relieving. That's relieving. Kind of fucking love that. That's a, that is just a delicious response. If uh, if I'm the criminal defense lawyer in this. Yes. Yeah. So view the video camera. I have. Okay. That's why your guilt isn't in the, in an issue here. That doesn't even make sense to me. Because if I'm on the video camera, that doesn't make sense. You have a video camera that shows me? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense to me. Um, we'll have to, I guess, I have no choice but to get a lawyer then. If this is the kind of thing you're going to well, go through is, with me. This, I mean, isn't, this isn't going to go away. You're, you're charged with breaking in. You will be charged tonight. That. Okay. You will be going to court in the morning. Perhaps the most upsetting moment, considering the fact that we know this man is innocent, you can see the fear emerge in his eyes as he realizes he won't be going home after this interview. Uh, charge for breaking in with intent. Okay, that, that's, that's what's going to happen right now. He is noticeably afraid of what lies ahead, yet reacts to the situation with reasoning and intuitiveness. Can I ask you something? Okay, are you just making this up that you have a video camera so you see how I react? Because it goes no, 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 that... This is a this is a smart guy, you know, and this is a guy that's clearly innocent because he's like, are you just making this up because there's no fucking way I'm on any video camera, that and that's what he's thinking in his head, but he's he's also very intelligent and and uh, calm in the way he's going about this. You're saying okay, let me up for a second. If I am guilty, as you believe, because you've had me on video camera, then okay, we'll go through the procedure. But I'm saying, I, I, you know, trying to call your bluff here because since I know I didn't do it, there's no way I can be on the video camera. Well, like I say, it's just so, game, it's not game of poker. Okay. Well, I've, I've got nothing to I'm not trying to be a hard time. And I would love, 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 love to jam those facts up that cop's ass fucking hard and twist. You know what? I've got nothing to gain from that either way, um, which is why I'm not asking you, did you do it? I'm not trying to catch you out. I've got nothing to gain from that. Getting a confession void of evidence is in fact excellent for an investigator's career. It's a mark of merit and can accelerate promotion. Michael continues to profess his innocence in a calm and composed manner for a further seven minutes. The detective then asks that he draw out a map and specify his movements before the arrest. Every detail of his alibi was later proven to be 100% accurate. Like I said, on the information that I've got, and one of the things about cops, there's two types of cops. Cops that just give the facts and cops that have an agenda. And most cops who investigate crimes have an agenda. When you ask them questions on the stand, they don't, uh, you know, when, they're, when you're asking as a defense lawyer the, or cross-examining a cop, they don't give up this, you know, the, the most uh, inane facts, you know, the ones that don't even matter. They don't even want to give you that. And that shows you their bias. And so they, they definitely have a dog in the fight, and they'll do whatever they can, including being dirty. You're going to be charged tonight with breaking in. Uh -huh. However, I do have a duty to make sure that the truth uh -huh. is... I have a duty about the truth. Fuck you and your duty of the truth. Give me a break. He, he's lying to this guy all along, just trying to get his reaction, and he's got a duty to the truth? Shove that up your ass. And the, tr basically, the truth is paramount. And the true the true version mm -hmm. of events is paramount, and I have a duty um, to investigate all of this, and I will investigate. Mm -hmm. I assure you, I'll investigate this story thoroughly, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, 
um, I'll be able to find something here mm -hmm. which will either prove or disprove mm -hmm. okay. the, the, you know, what we've discussed tonight. What did he say at the beginning? That your guilt is not even up for discussion. It's not even... Fuck you. Oh, now you're going to see whether or not I'm guilty? Mm. Fuck you. Okay. The problem is the speed at which this is going. Yeah. You know, like when I was on the ground, I was saying, go quickly to the terminal. I have like six or so guys around me, you know, like talk to the bus driver, right. you know? Like I, like I can't, I mean, I can't comment on things. That okay, I seen, know, unfortunately. but... Um, but now I'm... I'm left hanging, right? Now I'm looking at this. I mean, this is the basically on the evidence I've got, this is the only course of events that uh, can take place right now. But I, I will certainly make sure that this is looked into thoroughly. Okay, uh, great. I, I can give you my word on that. That's my duty. That's that's what I have to okay, do. I trust you will. I was just wondering, can I make a phone call? Because I'm supposed to be at work at 8 a.m. Uh, you're not going to be able to be at work at okay? yeah, yeah. I know I'm not going to be able to, but I like to phone ahead. I can arrange that uh, that you get the phone call to let someone know that you're not going to be. You know, and they, and they take a fucking sick pleasure. Uh, oh, you're not going to be able to go to work tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. It's not even up for discussion, you motherfucker. Place, yeah. So hang on that room till 10? No, nope, we'll be taking you downstairs okay. uh, to a, a larger custody facility which you have downstairs. Well, it's not the most pleasant place in a while, but it's only a few hours. Okay. Okay. Uh, from, from court tomorrow, what happens there? I don't know. Okay, well... I trust you will, yeah. yeah. I trust you will. Listen listen to how calm and respectful this guy is with the cop. And not not to mention, do you remember what they said at the beginning of this video? That the suspect was a short white guy and he's a tall black guy? Give me a break. Well, um, you know, I wanna I'll make sure we got the whole picture. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, in an enviable position and uh, you know. I understand the like the process. I just I'm not satisfied with it. That's what I'm saying. You know, uh, I, I don't understand. I don't and expect that you're going to be happy with it. You know, and I think in no disrespect to you, but I know someone sitting in this chair has probably lied to you many times, right? So I'm thinking, what can I do to uh, convince you? Try to give you the information. Like, you've, you've been you've you've been you've been very good with me, and I, I try and treat everybody as an individual. Okay. And my main aim is the two things: is that you get your rights. Mm -hmm. uh, that you're you're entitled to under the Constitution of Canada, mm -hmm. and that uh, you treat decently, and uh, that the truth comes out. The truth eventually did come out, but the suspect wasn't treated decently. He was kept in jail for three and a half days before a separate investigator looked into his alibi witnesses and checked surveillance of the area in question. He was then exonerated immediately. A civil trial ensued, and Michael was awarded $46,000 in punitive damages. The interrogating officer and three other investigators were all demoted and suspended without Good. pay. Wow, this was, this was an excellent commentary on uh, interrogations and guilty before proven innocent. Um, and it's sad that that guy had to go through it. They had information suggesting it wasn't him. You know, I mean, and what was gained by that officer doing that? It's what happens when you have a fucking two-year education and you think you're king shit. Anyway, this is Bruce Rivers. This has been another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I really appreciate uh, you for watching. Uh, check out JCS's videos. Uh, give him a shout out. Uh, tell him you saw it here and, uh, you know, share the love. And, you know, we'll do more of these reactions. Just let us know if you like it or you don't like it, whatever you like. Um, and uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Patreon, get a hat. We'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts.